Welcome back to Jersey Matters. I'm Larry Manti. The gubernatorial election is now set after this month's primary elections. Former Assemblyman, Republican Jack Cittarelli will take on Democratic incumbent Governor Phil Murphy, but it's not going to be easy for Cittarelli. Here's my interview with Dr. Ben Jworkin, Director of the Institute of Public Policy and Citizenship at Rowan University. Ben, as always, thanks for joining us. So now we have two candidates. I understand there are some other candidates, third, fourth, fifth, Green Party and Libertarian. I understand, but we have two major candidates, Republican and Democrat, after the primaries. So handicap this race now between Republican Jack Cittarelli and Governor Phil Murphy. Well, first, it's great to be with you, Larry. Um, And on this question, handicapping this gubernatorial race in New Jersey, I think widely uh, we are seeing that we expect Phil Murphy to win re-election. The public polls show him anywhere from 15 to 20 points ahead of Jack Cettarelli. And there are seven big reasons why Murphy is expected to win. The first is that he has a pretty popular record to run on a a number of accomplishments, everything from the minimum wage being raised, the millionaire's tax being raised, um, making a college education a little more affordable, criminal justice reform, cannabis. These are things that are pretty popular with the general public. He's been able to unify the Democratic Party, not particularly an easy task. A little bit of detente, not necessarily everybody singing Kumbaya, but everybody is definitely recognizing, hey, we're all on the ballot together this year. We're not going to be fighting in an election year. Murphy uh, is given high marks for his COVID response. There are obviously any number of different individual actions uh, over the past year and a half that people will quibble with. But as they increasingly are in the distance and people are focused on the economy, those generally he's given good marks and people are saying he got us through it. Let me stop you on that for a second. Yeah, sure. Because it is unusual, isn't it? He got the highest marks on his handling of the pandemic. We have the highest mortality rate of any state in the country. And he did have that problem early on with the nursing homes, but it doesn't seem to affect him. He seems like he has some Teflon when it comes to the pandemic. Do you have uh, do you have any guesses as to why that happened? Yeah, I, I think particularly uh, you know, the tragedy with the nursing homes and the elder care facilities uh, that happened early on. Most people are giving the governor a pass for things that happened in the beginning. Now, the governor and his team have their own explanation, uh, right? I mean, they say, we told folks that we would help if they needed help. They didn't ask for help and therefore people died. That is their explanation. But as a general political matter, the public is giving uh, the executives, the people in charge a pass. You know, unless you were alive and an elected official in 1918, nobody knew what they were doing. And so. But Tom Wolf's not getting a pass in Pennsylvania. Andrew Cuomo is certainly not getting a pass in New York. It is interesting that in New Jersey, this governor is getting a, a pass on the pandemic. And, and there's no question that his, his popularity in handling the pandemic is high. It's probably the top issue for him. Well, let's just uh, say, given Mario Cuomo, Cuomo's problem was that they lied about the numbers. Um, they hid things. It became a bit of a scandal. Uh, in terms of how they reported. And we didn't have that here in uh, New Jersey. So uh, again, it's not that they didn't say that the public is looking at this and saying, look, mistakes happen. This was terrible. And God forbid it was part of your family. It is extremely, uh, it's devastating. But are you blaming This Are they holding him politically responsible uh, for those kinds of things that happened early on? No. Can that happen today? No. I mean, the pass is for the early part of the pandemic, not for today. But currently, we have the highest mortality rate in the country when it comes to COVID-19. That's not in the past. That's right now. I, I think it's just fascinating that he's been able that everybody looks at him and and uh, adoringly about this one issue. It's, it is absolutely fascinating. You have to give his staff and him a whole lot of credit. I think much of it has to do with those daily briefings. You have to give him a whole lot of credit for this. In any crisis, I mean, Larry, you've been a professional communicator for years, and that's why people listen to you. Um, but in any crisis, uh, you would want the executive to be, you tell the 
things and to do certain things. Be decisive, be upfront, be accessible, explain your thinking. These things, Phil Murphy, who was largely unknown prior to the last year and a half, had a tremendously high, I don't even know that guy kind of reaction when you did public polling on him, is well known because exactly like you said he did those daily briefings he went out there and basically called it uh the way he saw it lots of people disagreed with him there are going to be plenty of folks who will argue certainly jack generally and the republicans are going to uh present their argument about how he did not do particularly well but is the public buying it not yet no that's a great point that, that he was up front and he was honest about it. Let's let's. I know I've stopped on this point, but let's move on. You you've gotten food. yeah. So look, just a couple other things that I think why Murphy is so far ahead in this race. Um, there's the growing economy. You know, increasing Murphy's success is going to be helped tremendously. The more the pandemic is behind us, and the economy begins to open up, and people are going back to work, which is going to generate just. We finally get back to a job. We're finally getting back to, to doing things. Uh, and that's he, as long as that happens on his watch, he's going to be able to take credit for it. Um, money. The fact is, Phil Murphy is a person of significant independent means. And if you need another million dollars to put ads on Philadelphia or New York network TV, he can uh, do that. One of the biggest reasons, this is number six, New Jersey is blue and it's getting bluer. You know, there are over 1 million more registered Democrats in New Jersey today than the, uh, than re registered Republicans. And this has tripled in the last 12 years. So that margin has made it much harder for any statewide Republican to beat a statewide Democrat in these kinds of uh, races. Typically, New Jersey, when it comes to gubernatorial elections, very purple, right? We have issues. It's not nearly the same kind of feelings people have about federal elections where Democrats have dominated. But at the same time, we are in a hyper-partisan uh, particular atmosphere these days. With, the, with uh, the former president still out there, people are it matters whether you have a D or an R next to your name. Uh, and given that there are just so many more registered Democrats, that's going to help Phil Murphy. They're just, it's not an, you know, an even deck of playing cards with the same number of red cards and black cards. This is heavily weighted towards Democrats. The seventh and final reason why uh, Murphy is ahead is, as I just sort of touched on, Donald Trump. He is the guest that wouldn't leave. And so long as he is around, it might help candidates in Alabama, but here in New Jersey, the more Trump is part of the conversation, the more it hurts Republicans like Jack Cedarelli who are trying to move beyond it. Well, he tried to move beyond Trump even during the primary, and that's the reason he had to spend money for against uh, against Hirsch Singh, who came really out of nowhere. He runs all the time, and but he embraced Trump, and then so did Phil Rizzo embrace Trump. And so Jack Chiarelli was forced to spend some money to, to, to go up against the Trump candidates because he was lukewarm on Trump. Now you're right. The first ad out of the box for, for Murphy is that he's a Trump Republican. So he's going to, he's damned to see if he does and damned if he doesn't, it seems like in this election. Yeah, Jack Chiarelli has been trying to walk a line a little bit make sure I'm, I'm not too anti-Trump. I agree where I agree and I disagree where I disagree. That may or may not be enough uh, for unifying the Republican base. But I don't even think that's the big challenge for Jack Cedarelli. This is not about trying to get pro-Trump Republicans to join anti-Trump Republicans to defeat Bill Murphy. That will largely come again because of partisanship. As long as you have an R next to your name, people are going to vote. But not everybody. You know, where Jack Cedarelli has a real challenge, um, aside from the fact that most people have no idea who he is. In the latest poll showed like 70% of the public just can't even make a decision about whether they like him or don't like him. But beyond that, the, uh, the big challenge for uh, Cedarelli uh, are not Trump Republicans, but Murphy Republicans. You know, in a poll last in the spring or in the Monmouth poll, you had one out of five Republicans who gave a favorable rating to Phil Murphy. And when you are this far behind in terms of registration, 
you can't afford to lose any Republicans. Um, numbers so have come down. This is going to be a challenge for him. Yeah, it's, they've come down pretty significantly since then. I, I, they're still over the 50 percent mark. I understand that. And that's strong. But it's nowhere near the 70 percent he had in, in the heart of that pandemic. It, it seems like in an off year election for the governor's race, it does start to tighten up a little bit. And I know both sides are going to be spending a whole lot of money. So it is going to be fascinating to watch. The one poll that caught my eye was the Rutgers Eagleton poll. And it was admittedly done before the primary was even over. So when it comes to head to head, it, it, you really can't look at it. However, when they talked about Governor Murphy, his highest numbers, as you said, were on the pandemic. His lowest number by far was only 7% approval when it comes to taxes. I talked to Jack Cittarelli last week he saw that poll too. That's all his people are going to go after as we come out of the pandemic. Is that enough? It's the best thing they've got to go with. And that uh, it obviously has potential to score an upset victory. Again, increasingly as the pandemic is behind us and the economy and issues of affordability return to being front and center for the New Jersey voter, People are going to talk about taxes, and there is a record for the Democrats and for Phil Murphy on taxes. Murphy will argue it's a popular one, that people don't mind raising taxes on millionaires. Jack Cedarelli will talk about affordability, will talk about any number of different issues related to taxes, because that is his strongest platform to drive a home a message that there needs to be change in Trenton. Well, it's going to be fascinating as it goes along. We'll check in with you again, if that's okay. I, I... Looking forward to it. Ben Dworkin from Rowan University's Institute of Public Policy and Citizenship. Coming up next on Jersey Matters, we'll get the latest poll numbers on the governor's race from Fairleigh Dickinson University. That's next. <laughs>